Hello, everybody. Greetings. Thank you very much for joining us at Canada's first millennial hotel competition called Hotel Next. So thank you very much for being here. My name is Hugo Germain. I'm a director of development for Group Germain Hotels, uh, in charge of developing uh, Alt Hotels and uh, Le Germain Hotels across the country. Uh, very exciting job, as we have uh, many opportunities. Uh, by the way, I invite you all to visit our latest opening in Ottawa that has uh, been open for about six, seven weeks now, and we're very happy about that on Slater Street. So uh, you're all welcome, officially. So um, as you know, uh, the Canadian Hotel Investment Conference has been running for 20 years, and in an effort to get more uh, young people involved in our industry, Charles Sotheby and a group of individuals came up with the idea, the great idea, of trying to bridge the gap between the industry today and those who will be the creative minds and industry leaders tomorrow. As a means of linking uh, these two parties, we've created a contest called Hotel Next, with the objective of having a forum to allow hotel school teams to present innovative ideas and hotel concept of the next generation. A national contest uh, competition was launched in September where students assembled teams and using the case study approach were asked two things. First of all, to design a new hotel concept, and most of all, also to make sure it's financially viable for development. Today, the top three teams are here to pitch their ideas with hopes of winning. So the Hotel Next website featured details about the contest and many resources for the teams to, uh, to, uh, to consult, including a uh, group of mentors that uh, made themselves available uh, for any students who might have questions. Thank you very much for all the mentors who helped. I believe we have them on the, on the board. Thank you very much. A small selection committee chaired by Charles Sotheby, including uh, Sarah Glenn, Sandeep Gupta, and uh, Jeff Islop met two weeks ago in order to review the submissions and uh, in order to score presentations on the five categories you see on the screen. The selection committee picked three teams that have been flown all expenses paid by Big Picture Conference in order to, so that they can present to you in person today. So we're very fortunate because we have people from all over the country today. Um, the teams are Team Laurie, uh, Team Hotel of All Sorts, and also Team Vino Vina. Along with receiving the Hotel Next trophy and the obvious bragging rights, the first prize will be $5,000 cash. The second place will win $3,000, and the third prize will win $2,000. So at the end, everybody is a winner, and no one will leave the room empty-ended. As I'm sure you recognize, asking these teams to present their ideas in front of such seasoned professionals as you are in this room is an immensely intimidating proposition. So let us thank the teams now for their bravery. Uh, before we hear from the teams, let me meet our judges uh, who have generously sponsored the Hotel Next competition. Paul Waddell, the Director of Design and Build at BLT Construction. Paul, why don't you give us a little uh, introduction about yourself? Thank, Thank you. you very much, Hugo. Uh, as Hugo said, I'm Paul Waddell from uh, BLT Construction. Uh, we are a mid-sized construction firm specializing in hospitality. and. Uh, uh, we're, we have offices in Vancouver and Toronto. Uh, for myself, this might make me the oldest judge, but uh, I believe I'm celebrating my 30th year in the hospitality industry, uh, starting off in architecture uh, way back when, working through uh, interior uh, design and, and fit out uh, starting in, in Toronto here with Metropolitan Hotels, uh, did lots of work in Niagara, probably about 3,000 hotel rooms there. Uh, and then from 2000 on, uh, a real pleasure uh, being a part of uh, uh, most uh, boutique hotel developments uh, in the Toronto area. So super excited to be here and uh, can't, wait, can't wait to see the presentations. Thank you very much, Paul. Next up, we have uh, David Humphrey, Director of Development, Americas at Fairmont Raffles Hotel International. David, uh, please uh, let the crowd know a little bit about you. 
Uh, just to echo Hugo's earlier comments, uh, big thank you to uh, Charles Sudeby for uh, coming up with this fantastic concept. And uh, thank you to the big picture team for bringing it to life, uh, Ori, uh, Annie, and Vicky. Um, so in my role at Fairmont, uh, I'm focused on growing our three brands, uh, Fairmont, Raffles, and Swiss Hotel uh, in the Americas. Um, our most recent uh, activity has been mainly in the US and Mexico from a development perspective. Uh, we recently added the uh, Grand Del Mar in San Diego, California, uh, the Claremont Hotel in Berkeley, California, and our most recent uh, addition uh, being uh, the Fairmont Costa Canuva, which is uh, just outside Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. Um, that said, we have a couple opportunities, uh, active opportunities in Canada that we're focused on. Obviously, we're in a lot of markets here already, but, uh, but always looking for, for new opportunities here, uh, here at home. Um, and one, one final thank you to, uh, to the teams today um, for coming out. Uh, we had a chance, the judges and myself had a chance to review your, um, your larger submissions. I know what you're going to view today is just a summary of the hard work that uh, all the teams today put in. Um, so just uh, once again, congratulations on making it this far, and, and we're looking forward to seeing your presentations. Thank you. Uh, Natasha Kassam, uh, the Vice Chair of the Jubilee Hospitality Association of Canada. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for being here, and congratulations just to echo Paul and uh, David. On uh, Congratulations to the teams for making it out this far. You've done a fantastic job. I'm here representing Jubilee Hospitality Association. We're a community-based organization uh, which started approximately five years ago uh, with approximately 5,000 rooms represented nationally, and we've grown over the five years to 50, over 15,000 rooms across the country. Uh, we specialize in finding procurement deals and, and sharing best practices across all hotel owners within our Ismaili community base. Um, so we're very happy to be here uh, representing as a sponsor. Thanks for including us, big picture, and we look forward to all the presentations. Thank you very much, Natasha. So, so before we begin, let's, let's see a little bit how the, the voting works. So if you look at the center of your table, actually in front of you, uh, there are some voting machines, small uh, machines, and uh, a scorecard. You can also find the scorecards, part of your uh, program uh, brochure from today. So let's go over the scorecard. There is five categories to vote. The first one being the creativity. So how novel is the thinking behind the idea? How resourceful? Is it truly an out-of-the-box concept? And has the uh, offering been a solution, uh, sorry, or, or solution has been introduced before uh, in this market? Second of all is the return on investment. So has the projected income statements been presented accurately? Are they presented five fiscal years out? Uh, the integrity in the numbers, etc. Competitiveness is the next one. How accurately are the competitors identified? The fourth one is the target market identification. How accurately is the market being, uh, being identified? And the last one is being the differentiation aspect. So how distinctly different is the concept? Each category is going to be worth 10 points. I will remind you that the teams are made of students. They have been asked to create concepts that are innovative and viable and to present evidence of that viability. I remind you that these students have put a lot of hours, many hours, into their submissions and do not have the years of experience that many in this room do have. So I ask you that you don't find necessarily the fault, but embrace their efforts. Hopefully, in this way, we can encourage their out-of-the-box thinking and as they move forward in their careers. It's time now for the presentation. So, uh, Team Lori, I ask you, please, to uh, come to the stage. We're here to introduce to you our concept, our unique limited service boutique style concept known as Options by Lori Hotels. Because at Options, you, you the guest, you've got the option to purchase from a list of add-ons, amenities, and facilities that all other hotels assume all guests need. Why should I be paying the same rate as the guy sleeping in the room next to me who booked his room the same time I did, but he's using the pool, he's using the fitness facility, he's eating so much from the complimentary breakfast every morning, when all I'm doing is checking in my room at 8 p.m., going to bed by 9, waking up at 6 a.m., not even bothering with the complimentary breakfast. So that is why we've created this unconventional hotel business model 
that allows guests to customize their accommodation experience to pay as they go. So Options Hotel is going to be located in the Toronto Airport market with the proposed opening date of January 1st, 2018. It's going to consist of 200 guest rooms at a total square footage of 63,000. Now I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but let's keep in mind that each room is going to be 170 square feet. Our estimated construction cost totaled $30.2 million, while the prospective market value was $30.8 million. This yielded a 22.1% return on equity. Recognizing that there's no perfect comp in today's marketplace, um, who, who would you see as being your kind of number one competitor if you were to go out into the marketplace looking to develop this elsewhere? It really depends on where we're locating ourselves. As of right now, we are in the Canadian market, so we do have a nice, beautiful property right beside our location. The Alt Hotel is very, very similar in the sense of uh, their sort of limited service offering, however they offer that spacious lobby area. Rooms are relatively small. Um, in that sense, we also developed an appendices here just to show you other comparable brands that we might be able to be competing against, that being Citizen M, uh, a company based out of Amsterdam. Moxie Hotels is starting to roll out through their distribution of the social space, social atmosphere, uh, things of that matter. And then Toon Hotels uses that sort of similar add-on concept. They're based out of Malaysia, and uh, they're more so budget. Um, so it really depends where we are, but as of right now, I think one of our main competitors in Canada is Alt Hotels. Next will be team uh, the Hotel of All Sorts, who came all the way down from uh, Thompson Rivers University, located in Kamloops, BC. Please welcome Colin Black, Queenie Lee, and Kelsey Perra to the stage. Our idea is to develop the Hotel of All Sorts a 60-room Emily Carr-inspired hotel and conference center in Tofino, British Columbia. It will contain a restaurant, spa, conference center, art gallery, and staff accommodation unit. 94% of all travelers go to Tofino for the reason of leisure. Only 1% are business travelers. The Emily Carr experience, combined with the lack of conference space and the business professional, presents the opportunity of an untapped market. Since Tofino is a very typical resort town, we see very prominent high, low, and shoulder seasons. We'll be strategically shifting our focus from different target markets during the different seasons in order to maximize and stabilize revenue, providing aboriginal tourism as well as arts and cultural activities and workshops We'll be sure to draw in our primary target market of leisure travelers, or more specifically, the cultural explorer. While having the largest conference and event venue in the region, we'll draw in events and meeting groups, bringing in those events and meeting travelers, and opening up this untapped market to the entire region. Just a quick question on the revenue side. If you could give us a little bit of an explanation or some numbers on where you we understand the room revenue was expected around the $4 million mark in year one. Where do you come up with the ADR and occupancy compared to your competitors? We got rates from our five direct competitors, found the average, and placed ourselves at where we think our quality would be, so in the upper mid-range level. Now it's up to uh, team Vino Vina from Mount St. Vincent University, located in Halifax, Nova Scotia. Please welcome Sarah O'Connor and Evangeline Singh to the stage. At Vino Vino, we offer the perfect escape plan, a chance to wind down from our crazy, hectic lives and get back to the basics, back to the wine and the food, but with, our, but with an air of sophistication and a touch of luxury and class. It is designed for the millennial generation, but it is a concept that is understood, accepted, and embraced by the baby boomers and other generations as well. Vino Vina will partner with the local winery, sharing the idyllic scenery and views of the vineyard. In Nova Scotia specifically, the wine industry has experienced significant growth over the last 10 years. In 2011, there were only 22 grape growers. Today, there are 98. In 2015, there were $15.4 million in wine sales and over 100,000 visitors to wineries alone. And this number only continues to grow today. Nova Scotia's wine industry holds great potential. Although it may be a young and new wine region, its quality precedes expectation. 
At Vino Vina, all your senses will be engaged. A unique experience from start to finish. The lobby, designated as the tasting room, acts as a multifunctional space that will not only be the hotel lobby, but also the tasting room for the partnered winery, and will bring together locals and visitors from all around, an excellent third space for guests to socialize and interact with the food, wine, and local talent. Good food and good wine go hand in hand. Having a full service four diamond restaurant located in the tasting room with creatively crafted pairings and locally inspired menus provide that authentic taste of place that millennials are searching for. Food and wine events will play a large role for this hotel. Vino Vina will have beautiful indoor and outdoor banquet spaces with scenic vineyard views perfect for weddings, retreats, parties, meetings, and receptions. All of our research has shown that this concept does not exist anywhere. This concept is not solely limited to wine, however. It's what we used for our concept because it's what we know and we know that there's a, a need for it in the Annapolis Valley. However, it could also be used for beer, spirits, or even non-alcoholic beverages such as coffee and tea. This opens up potential new markets without oversaturating the competitive set. Do you see the wedding market as being a big sector and, and driving your food and beverage numbers? I, I, our experience, what we're finding is, is uh, people will pay just about anything to be married near a, a, a vineyard. Yeah, we're definitely taking advantage of our beautiful scenery. Everybody, um, I was just looking at various wineries in Nova Scotia and they host a lot of wedding events and the price range varies based on where you want it, how you want it set up, do you want a special room? And since we have banquet spaces of indoor and outdoor, we can take advantage of um, if there's bad weather like, and how to deal with it. So definitely a big driver. So thank you very much, ladies. Thanks. Paul, uh, why don't you go first? What do you think about the presentations today? I'll stand up for this. Uh, first of all, uh, we were privy to see the paper version of your presentations, but to see the passion, feel the passion in your, your presentations uh, is exceptional. I think each one of you did a fantastic job. Um, you all have long careers in this business, I can see that. Uh, I'd be surprised if you didn't get accosted going out the door by, by some of these people. Uh, just a fantastic job. All three did a really good job of uh, branding. I, th I think, yeah. um, and just, you should all be very, very, very proud of yourselves. Well done, guys. So David, talk a little bit about numbers. Yeah. Uh, what yeah. did you notice, ROI-wise? Yeah, just to echo Paul's comments, I think you guys just aced like what has now officially become the largest interview in the Canadian hotel industry, so. Um, <laughs> Good job on getting up there and, and doing what you just did. I know that's not easy even for the seasoned professionals in this room to, to get on the stage in front of 600 odd people. So uh, congratulations. Um, I think from an ROI approach, um, you all did a fantastic job. Um, I think the support, you all kind of looked to industry resources like the HBS benchmarking uh, study and whatnot. So I think uh, there was validity in your numbers, um, which um, you know when I was in school, it's kind of like one course that you learn quickly and, and you don't have that much uh, exposure to that. So I think that there was probably a, you know, a lot of learning that went on with putting this, these presentations together and I think you did a wonderful job. Um, I think the one that, that, that probably stood out to me, um, and it's a tough call to pick one, um, was probably the airport hotel concept just in the, in the structure um, of the ROI um, and, and how you came to your, you know, your, there was a fair amount of professionalism in kind of the way the study was done, as was with all the, of all the projects, but uh, I think yours in particular stood out, so congratulations. Thank you, uh, David. Natasha, the, the, I guess, I guess the, the, the hard question is, uh, in your mind, which one is the most creative idea you've seen today? Uh, so not to be a broken record, but it's amazing what you guys have done here. You should be very proud of yourselves. Uh, to see you guys all thinking outside of the box that way is phenomenal. I think we've all grown up growing with those uh, typical boxes of hotels, whether they be large or small, and being able to take it to become something as unique as a container hotel or to uh, taking what is a Canadian heritage or to something that we all love and enjoy. So well done to all of you. I don't think I could single out one in terms of from a creativity point of view. Fantastic job, 
and take your ideas and continue to grow with them because they are all very creative, all very much thinking to the next level of the future. So well done. In third place, we have Hotel of All Sorts. Congratulations. In second place, we have Team Vino Vigna. Congratulations. Our big winners today, Team Options. Good job, Team Roy. Good job. Congratulations. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, great job.